Hey everyone, and welcome back. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more breaking news updates. Today, we're diving into a pressing and contentious issue that's dominating headlines around the globe. We're talking about the recent military actions in Rafah, where Israeli forces have intensified their operations. This move comes just days after a devastating airstrike ignited a fire that tragically claimed the lives of numerous Palestinians. Now, amidst these escalating tensions and the heart-wrenching human cost, a major statement came from the White House. According to officials, the actions taken by Israel have not crossed what President Biden refers to as the red line. This term has sparked a flurry of debates and discussions. What exactly constitutes this red line? And more importantly, how is it determined in such complex geopolitical crises? As Israeli tanks roll deeper into central Rafah, marking a significant escalation, the world watches and reacts. This progression has not only led to global condemnation, but has also put a pause on U.S. aid deliveries to Gaza, following damage to its temporary pier. The stakes are incredibly high, and the situation remains fluid. During a recent press briefing at the White House, when confronted with a provocative question about the human cost of these military actions, Kirby, a spokesperson, expressed offense emphasizing that we don't want to see a single more innocent life taken. This statement reflects the tightrope the U.S. is walking, balancing between diplomatic relationships and the urgent calls for humanitarian considerations. This situation in Rafah is a vivid reminder of the complex dance of diplomacy, military strategy, and human empathy. It raises critical questions about international policies, alliances, and the very principles that govern these decisions. So what do you think? Where should the line be drawn and who gets to draw it? How do we balance strategic interests with human rights? These are not just questions for politicians and military leaders. They're questions for all of us as global citizens. Thanks for tuning in. Keep the conversation going in the comments below. And remember, stay informed, stay engaged, and keep questioning. Until next time, take care.